My music doesn't make you feel either sad, happy, hopeless, like I don't know. It doesn't make you feel a certain type of way. I feel like I didn't accomplish what I wanted. Growing up in Dallas, the area that I was in, it was just more like I was in the suburbs with it. So it was like I was in the suburbs, then going to the hood with it, but it was more like very chill. I really didn't, you know, do too much. I was in sports. I went outside to play with my homeboys. And I just like, kind of just went to school. I've never really just experienced Dallas culture because, you know, I'm still young. It's being a kid, hearing beats through the wall, you're not knowing what's going on. Like me growing up and being like, hearing doom, doom, doom. I'm like, I'm gonna be nosy. So I just walked in there and I was like, what like, what are you doing? And he was like, making beats. And I'm like, what, like, what's that? He was like, let me play one. He played one. And I was like, okay, like I like this. Cause I wasn't a kid, so I was like, this hard, this hard. Like <laughs> it was just like a cool moment with my dad. And he was like, you should really do music. Whenever I first started music, being consistent wasn't really on my agenda because I was in school. I used to just follow people lead, like, oh, they doing music? I can do music too. Let me just hop on the wave. So I hopped on the wave and it was like, people really was messing with my music though. It was like, okay, like, we thought you was just trying to do something. You can really rap, you can really sing. I was around so much mess being in high school. When you're in high school, you're around so many different, you know, personalities and egos and opinions, and it kind of changes the way that you think about yourself or just think the, how you should move. And it's like, I shouldn't feel like that. I want to graduate early, I want to have my own mind. So my whole thing of graduating early was just to get my own sense of mind and just like my own sense of peace, because I was fighting. I was doing way too much in high school. So whenever I graduated early, it was kind of like I jumped off the porch. Like I graduated two months early into my senior year. I graduated in October. We started school in August. So it was just like, um, after I did that, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was like, I don't want to be like nobody else. I remember like it was yesterday, I was going to Penn Stacks some like a uh, gaming place and my mom would text me like you to go home da -da -da. you need to go pop for school because it was like whenever i went out with my friends no like you need to go home it was just it was a no-go and i'm like oh, i always gotta go home like i just don't want to work i worked at zoomies cheddars all these different places and I, they just didn't fit me the people were rude or i just felt like i couldn't work for nobody else if it wasn't something that i loved doing and she kept, you know, calling my phone, telling me to go home. And I was like, I don't know, something's gonna happen, it's gonna change my life. Like, I just feel like that. She was like, I understand that, but you need to apply for these colleges and you need to go to, like, you know, go to work. But I remember the next day, right when my mama was cussing me out, I got a call from Dev Jim and they were like, we wanna fly you out to New York. I know who it was, I thought somebody was playing on my phone. She was like, no, nah, like, this is real. We wanna fly you out. And I got flown out the next day. So like all my musical influences, like listening to SZA on SoundCloud was just it for me. Like I felt like she gave off a new generation Erica Badu. She didn't care. She was talking about everything. She was talking about everything she went through from smoking and anxiety and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, I love stuff like that. Like she just keeping it real. So listening to that type of music and listening to Logic and Frank Ocean and Drake, I was just taking bits and pieces from everybody. Like, how do I? How do I make this like my own sound? When I first linked up with my bro Sonic Major, he was the one that created the sound of Cash Page. Like he just told me say whatever I was doing, and I was like, I told it was this one girl I was talking to. I told her that I loved her. I didn't even love her. Like I just told her just because I wanted her to stay with me, and I was like, tell you that I love you just to make you stay. And that was the first song like I really ever wrote, and like went crazy right after that. That was like the start of Cash Page right there. I miss my cocoa butter kisses. Hope you smile when you listen. I didn't know love songs was gonna blow up. Like I made love songs on SoundCloud. I was really a a SoundCloud artist. I feel like being underground and being super low key. I thought that was the wave. I mean, it is the wave still, in my opinion. But it was just like at that age, I was like, yeah, that's the wave. Like I'm gonna drop this music, and people just gonna tune into me and be like, yeah, she's hard. When I first discovered love songs was popping, I was at Prairie View Homecoming, Prairie View, Texas, 
And I remember walking around the tailgate lit with my friends like, we love da, da, da. And somebody ran up to me like, yo, Cash, you know you're trending on Apple Music right now? And I was like, huh? They're like, bro, look, love songs is trending. Ever since that day, I'm always gonna remember October and November being the months of manifestation and making my dreams come true. The acronym for cash is kill all arrogance, stop hatred. I honestly do not like arrogant people. It just doesn't, something with arrogance just doesn't sit right with me. Growing up, I've always stuck with that. Like, always stay humble and just know, you know, know your worth and know that you're you're never gonna be better than anybody. We're all the same, we're all equal. I feel like writing is kind of like venting. You, you vent to this, you know, this piece of paper, you vent to this note in your phone. It's just like, if you don't have nobody else to talk to, who else can I talk to? And so whenever I started writing poetry, it was just how I felt at the moment, either depressed, sad, or happy. It was just me venting to that note in my phone, just letting it be known, like, this is my emotions and this is how I feel. And I felt like that was pretty dope. You know, sometimes we have pride and we don't get vulnerable with stuff. So whenever I got vulnerable with my music, I'm like, people gonna rock with this because they can relate. If you're not really talking about what you live, nobody's gonna be able to relate to you. Whenever I made six four, like any song recorded ever, ever, like in my catalog has been recorded in the dorm room. If it was in a house, it was a dorm room. And I remember we sat in that room and I came up with them bars and I was, that song was like, that's hard. Everybody was in there like, yeah, six four, trying to hit that top speed. Everybody was live, like we had the dorm rooms knocking. And I was like, yeah, this, that cash, this is my cash, my checks. You know what I'm saying? Like we finna get extra lit. And I remember just making that song and just knowing I always want to make more music like that because people like to be in their feelings, but also people like to be turned. You don't always got to be in your feelings. Like, let's just, you know, like find different ways to vibe out. So the title of Park Car Combos, I feel like the name speaks for itself sometimes because it's like Park Car Combos, I feel like that's a therapy session when you're in the car with somebody getting to know you. You're in the car with your friends just venting or just smoking, chopping it up, just talking about life. And so it's kind of like when I made that, that EP, I just wanted to give that feel of the lifestyle that I lived. I love being, I, bro, I, I still do. I love being in cars, talking to people, or just like smoking in cars. Like, it's just a vibe. We don't do that no but People like want to be in the house or do whatever. Like, I feel like if we can chop it up even outside by the car, like that's, that's my type of vibe. So when I came up with Options and Heartbreaker and all these different types of songs, it was kind of like, what's the songs that you would play in the car just real low while you vibing out with somebody? What I wanted to accomplish on my debut album was letting people know that you're not alone. We can relate to everything. I'm a teenager still, like I'm 19, about to go turn 20. So I was like, Teenage Fever is just really me describing all the emotions I went through as being a teenager and just like the ending of it. Whenever I made it, it was kind of like, I just wanted to express my emotions either throughout, you know, my lyrics or just instrumentation. Like you hear violins, you hear crazy bass lines. Like it's just, you hear everything that makes you feel a certain type of way. My music doesn't make you feel either sad, happy, um, hopeless. Like, I don't know. If it doesn't make you feel a certain type of way, I feel like I didn't accomplish what, you know, what I wanted. I feel like it was important for me to address depression and everything because we've all had our moments when we were down. In my songs, I'm really talking about it, but uplifting you too, because it's like, girl or bro you're not alone like we all feel the same way so me being a voice of teens and just letting them know that it's so you know it's okay to go through these emotions but know that it's always a rainbow after every storm it was just kind of like just getting that out there and just putting that in their head and just like for them it's like healing music did you miss me
I was at Rolling Loud for the first time. I was staying at the London Hotel in L LA, and that was my first time staying there too. So it was, I was getting, you know, like used to new things and just being able to live this, you know, lavish lifestyle. And it was like, I was living with my brother. So that was just like my happiness. And I remember making the London, like, hey, hey girls pulling up at 3 a.m. Like, that's what I was talking about. Like, I really have to talk about my life because if I don't, it's like, what are you really making music for? So it was kind of like, I'm at the London with my bros and we're pouring up. Yeah, I started liking females at a young age. Like, I just always thought females were pretty. I honestly just started talking to them like my freshman year, eighth grade year, I don't even know. It was just like, talking about what I'm, you know, what I'm doing is fun. Like, I'm young. Of course, I'm not gonna be in a loyal, you know, relationship right now, like I'm single. So I feel like a lot of males can relate and that's how I get the male, you know, the male side of my fans. They're like, oh, I can, I can rap in a car to this. I can sing in a car to this. Cause she not saying, she not saying boy. So I feel like that's why a lot of my male fans love me more. Cause it's like, we can relate. We can really vibe to this and if my female see me singing it, she gonna know I'm toxic or whatever. In all honesty, when I look into that cash page, Crystal Ball, I see me being one of the biggest artists in the world. And I want y'all to remember this call too. Like, I'm gonna be one of the biggest artists in the world and nobody has no idea. Like, give me, give me like the rest of these few months to make some shape. And I promise you by next year, I'm gonna be one of the biggest artists. Like that's my whole dream, like being the biggest artist, help people out with nonprofit organizations and just like being a healer to the world and just having fun. I wanna live my life. Like I wanna do cartoon shows. I wanna do stuff with theme parks. Like I wanna do a lot of stuff. You know, my ambition never stops. So my whole thing is just being happy, you know, and it, it, celebrating this happiness with my family, my team, my friends, and just living life. That's all I wanna do and make music.